All right. So again, for everybody just joining, welcome to Cool Tips for Hot Leads, how to measure and maximize your website ROI. So I'm just going to take a minute now and introduce everybody to our guest expert on the call. Today, we have the honor of having Andrew Schiestel, the Chief of WOW at TB Creative, TBK Creative. Sorry. Hi, Andrew. We have you on the call here. Hello, Reagan. Hi, everybody. Perfect. Okay, so here's a little bit of a background on Andrew, guys. He is the Chief of WOW at TBK Creative, an international award-winning web design and social media marketing agency that is based in London, Canada. His work has appeared in media publications coast to coast now, including CBC, um, CTV, Toronto Star, Globe and Mail, Yahoo News, um, Huffington Post, and many more. In the last three years, actually, Andrew's trained over 300 organizations on web and social media marketing at corporate events and conferences across Canada. Business London has actually called him Mr. Social, and the London Free Press has called him a rising star in London's high-tech sector. Recently, at the 2013 International, or sorry, Internet Advertising Competition, TBK Creative was awarded four international awards including Outstanding Website and Manufacturing and Best Social Media Campaign in the Legal Industry. So some of TBK's uh, clients include North Star Windows and Doors, Scholar's Choice, Siskins LLP. Uh, we have Fertility Ontario, Service Credit Union, Hospitals Lottery, Dream Lottery, Oakwood Resort, and the list goes on. Andrew actually writes as well um, a regular column for London Free Press on how consumers can use uh, digital and social media. And then when asked a bit about um, what Andrew's commitment is in this world of web, he has stated that he wants a world where businesses aren't ignorant or scared of digital and social media, but are very clear about its potential, are in action around it, are, and are thriving as a result of it. And on that note, Andrew, I will hand it over to you. Welcome to the call. Thanks, Reagan. Um, yeah, welcome everybody to, to the call. Thanks for being here. Uh, as Reagan said, we'll, we'll hashtag out today from um, hashtag TBKU. Um, Reagan will be monitoring it on behalf of TBK Creative. Uh, the U would be um, U, like the letter U, like uniform, so TBKU. Um, so welcome to the call. Um, hey, Reagan, just before we get started, mm -hmm. I noticed that I can see the number of people on the call, but I can't actually see the names. I might be on just a different um, setting. Is oh. it worthwhile setting me up as a presenter before we Let dive in here? Too. Just in case. Sure. Make sure you can see that. Thank you. I can see. All right. Any better for you now? Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Cool. All right. I just want to make sure everybody can still see Andrew's can, presentation as well, though. I can see the chat box now, that which I like too. Hey, hey, Cody, Jennifer, Lori, and others. Some of the the hellos. Good. Yeah. So as, yeah, Reagan said, if you have questions throughout, just just use that um, question box, and we'll try to ask the question if it's if it um, really forwards a conversation at that at that point, or or if we have time at the end, we'll also do a Q and A. So let's let's um let's dive in here. We'll create some intentions, everybody. Um, just at the start here. Three intentions. So here's three goals that I, I really want to accomplish with you all over the next hour. Uh, number one, I want to help you guys learn better how to measure what your website is earning your company right now. This can be a really important one. Um, you, sh you, sh you should know. Um, and then that can allow you, if you actually know what it's earning you right now, then you can start to make changes over time and you can measure what it's earning you then and you can increment, you know, you can make changes to incrementally increase the, the value that your business is getting through the web. It's a very important thing to start to create this conversation called, how do I know how much my website is making me? Um, number two intention is to, um, I want to share with you guys some actions you can take to increase your leads uh, and consequently sales through your website. And then I want you to be inspired and I want, I want you to leave the call learning a few ways to increase your company's revenue reliably through the web. That's a real commitment of mine today. Um, there is a prophecy out there that I, that I kind of, you know, I've labeled the digital self-fulfilling prophecy and it's just something I've observed. I'm calling it a prophecy, but it's something that, I, that I've just generally observed in the marketing world when speaking with 
hundreds of businesses in the last few years about their marketing. And I want to share this with, with you all. And, I, and so I, I call it the digital self-fulfilling prophecy. Um, regularly, what I see is to the extent that a business believes in the web, in digital advertising, and social media is to the extent that they'll be able to produce results. And I'm going to I'm going to give you guys an example of that. Let's say you're an accounting firm. You're about medium sized. Let's say you have 120 staff, including accountants. And you know you, the co the company's 25 years old. And and this is actually so as I share this, kind of think in your own own world because I, I might be sharing from an accounting perspective, but you may be able to see parallels in your own business, or you may have friends in other businesses that really fit this mold. Okay, so it's an accounting firm. It's 120 staff, and that that company got built over the last 25 years, and it's got a website that's a few years old. They maybe spent five grand or ten grand for it. Um, you, as the owner, um, you don't really see it making much money. It never really has made a lot of money through the web for you, so you don't really value the web. Therefore, so you don't really ever invest. You don't bring in experts, you don't educate yourself, you don't educate your people. You don't buy into the web because it's never made you money. And then um, what typically happens is that after a few years, your, your younger um, staff members will start coming to you saying, you know, Jim, <laughs> we, I really think we need a new website. You know, all this stuff, great stuff's happened on the, on the web. I, I think consumers are there. I think, I think we, need a, we need a website. And and then more more young staff will come and say the same thing. And then clients, you know, you'll be out for for dinner with a buddy. Um, and this actually happened with with one of our clients, where where one of one of his friends that owns a, owns a big company, he respected a lot. He said he said, just call him Bob. Bob, you need to be you need to be using social media. You know, it's working great for my company. Um, and so so it kind of goes through this, but you've never seen it for your own eyes make you money as this accounting firm as the owner. Or a principal partner with this firm and then you decide out of just a bunch of people coming to you finally you're gonna get a new website and you, and you do it and you budget about 10 grand or whatever and you build that website and it doesn't make you much more money than it made you previous and then you go on the way and and that's really that's that's it for for this accounting firm and you go you go on and you you do what you do you gain money where you gain money and you miss out on opportunities where you miss out on opportunities but you never know any better and then that same accounting firm will go and spend around seven hundred thousand dollars on a new building they'll do renovations they'll put ten thousand dollars in money and a little bit of thought into their digital plan and they'll spend seven hundred thousand dollars on renovating an office and here's what and that so that and that's sort of the start of this prophecy um, because of the belief system that that company held. Here's what a lot of people don't realize right now. Web has dramatically changed in the last five or 10 years. And through our own in, internal studies at TBK Creative, looking at our client base, this is some of the things that we, we have found recently that I want to share with you guys that I think is very fascinating. The, um, the average retailer that we've looked at, they gain over three times more website traffic than foot traffic. And that even is at scale. We have one retailer with over 20 locations and it's the same, it's the same thing. Their website gets three times, over three times more website traffic than, than foot traffic. Professional services firms, not, not as heavy on as a retailer with foot traffic. I still haven't seen a, a professional services firm with less than four times more website traffic than foot traffic. And then manufacturing companies who work very, very little, if, if at all, with a consumer, they, they're getting 100 times plus, typically, in website traffic versus their foot traffic. You see, there's, there's so that, the first set of, you know, the example of the accounting firm is the, the firm that doesn't believe that, that people are online now and there actually is an opportunity to dramatically increase your revenues beyond what you thought was possible in terms of you know money into marketing and and revenues out and then there's another type of business out there that that's starting to exist and these type of businesses are you know they they're in on the little secret they know that the majority of Canadians right now are walking around holding a communications device that brands if they understand it can actually find ways to communicate with them almost every day the, the same type of business has realized that over half the country of Canada logs into Facebook at least once a month. 
this this newer type of business or this new paradigm, you know, people who who believe in this paradigm realize that Google actually makes more off advertising than the entire print industry right now. I'll repeat that again. That wasn't I didn't that wasn't a typo. <laughs> Google makes more money in revenue off advertising each year now than the entire print industry. Way more people will visit your $10,000 website every month than your $700,000 location. And those that can now configure that out and figure out how to start to translate that website traffic into leads and sales. That's, that's where the opportunity is. So on today's call, what I want to chat with everybody about is website visitors. And, and I want to go over the four types of visitors that we believe here at TBK Creative possess value. Um, and each one has to be thought about differently and you have to strategize about each one differently. They, each one that really has their own you know, set of dialogue that you need to create around it. For the call, I'm really going to be focusing on number one and two, hot leads and soft leads. And I am going to br brush over, I'm going to touch base on visitors of interest. I'm going to explain who, what, what that is, who those people are. And I'm going to speak a little bit about e-commerce transactions as well. Um, an entire webinar, a series of webinars can be on e-commerce transactions uh, uh, alone. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a huge, quickly growing world how retailers use, use the web to maximize revenues. Um, through through email follow-ups, through cookies, and all that kind of stuff. So so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on number three and number four. I'm going to focus the talk on number one and two, and we at some point we'll revisit number three and four in the future in uh, in inside of con our content strategy with TBK to help businesses. Okay, so let's talk about the first the the first type of lead. And um, at TBK we define this as a hot lead. So you know as I'm going through these, everybody think about your own business, think about the website and your web strategy right now. Think about your customers and think about um, how this will apply to you. There are two types of hot leads that a website can, can acquire. And so it's simple in that respect. It's people that are contacting your, your company to learn more about your services or to book an appointment. And they can do it either through a web form or a phone number. And this is pretty straightforward. Most websites have a contact us of some sort. This is an example of a phone number on a website. Pretty straightforward. Now, when it comes to actually tracking it, and, and so we're gonna get to sort of our first intention here, revenue from a website. To determine the revenue from your website, what, what the, the easiest formula is doing a little bit of research through your analytics and figuring out how many total hot, hot leads you acquire. So hot leads is a combination of unique phone calls each month that are leads and web forms times your close rate. And so that is what does your sales team close on average per hot lead. So if you think back to your last 10 leads through your website, you want to figure out what percentage of those actually became sales. Every business has a close rate and it varies per business. We, we, we work with businesses as low as seven, uh, as low as 20% and as high as 70%, depending on your business and, and how effective your sales team is. What is your processes? What is your quality of your product? There's a whole, whole slew of it, but it's a close rate and you should determine that what that is. If you want to determine what the revenue is from your website, and then, and then you multiply that by your total hot leads by your close rate times the lifetime value. And, or you could go by one year value if you want to be more conservative of a new customer. So I'm going to use an example. So if you want to figure out your total hot leads, what I would, what I would do is, is I would go back in your last month and figure out how many people have actually legitimate leads have filled out a web form and you, you write that number down and then you add it to how many people phoned you phone now in the past on the web has been a bit of a mystery. Um, if, if the person that picks up the phone at your office doesn't track it. So I want to share with you basically two methods to be able to start to track 
um, phone leads. The first method is through phone analytics. And there's a great service that TBK Creative uses out of the US called If by Phone, I F B Y P H O N E dot com. So you can you can check check them out. Um, we just use them as a vendor and we've been happy with, with their service. Um, and then so what that allows you to do is you can now begin to track through their system how many people are phoning your business from your website every single month. And if you don't do phone analytics, because some businesses do get attached to the phone number, um, rightfully in some instances, that they, that, that they, that they have on that, that site, because maybe they've used it for 30 years or whatever, and it's the only phone number, then you, you, so you have to do a little digging here. It's not an easy process, but you'll have to set up some processes within and some structures within your organization so that as people are calling in, whoever is picking up the phone is logging the source of the phone call within, their, within the CRM of some, some sort, like a client relationship management software, at the very least, just use an Excel. Just use an Excel document, set it up for the person um, or your team who picks up that, that, that phone call. And what you're doing is you're logging leads, logging leads. You want to assess what is, back to the chart, what is your total hot leads? You know, it could be, it could be 50 last month. And then you want to do a little bit of work and you go to your sales team who manages, you know, who has their own CRMs. They know, they know their, they know who the leads were and if they closed or not, get into a dialogue with them and determine what is the close rate of, of hot leads as they come through, through the website. And that, that number should probably come in anywhere between 20 and 70%. Some businesses are just by the nature of their business, very, very high. And then you want to determine the lifetime value of, of a new customer. Um, you can, you can do a whole bunch of different models here to kind of, uh, determine this. It could be lifetime um, value. You can go by your gross profit. You can go by your net. You can go by your gross revenue. If you want to be really, really easy, you just have to realize when you're determining the, the, the revenue that obviously you have expenses to come from that. If you want to be more conservative. So if you're a professional services firm, most professional services firm will firms will retain clients, um, two, three plus years on average. So if you want to be really conservative, you, you, you go by the one year value and this, so you, so there's a little bit of work up front, but I recommend you guys do this work for your website. So you can actually determine what your website generates you now. And then once you actually know what a hot lead is actually worth, then you start to get into the dialogue about, well, what actions should we take to generate more hot leads? What media do we buy? to do that? What changes do, to our website do we make to, to do that? And so this is baselining, but it's, but it's a, it's an important step. It's a step that a lot of businesses don't do at the start, but it's a step that I recommend that businesses do at the start. Try to really baseline um, how much money your website is making you now. Treat it like a sales tool. Let's go over four actions that you can take to begin to increase hot leads on a website based on the traffic that you have now. So no change in traffic. So we're assuming that that variable stays constant. Most websites that we look at when we do audits really don't communicate value well for the brand. And I like to say every, every brand that I've seen has unique value propositions. There's things about them that, that are unique. But most businesses have a real difficult time communicating that inside of any type of marketing collateral or, or, um, or online, which is also marketing collateral. It's just digital collateral, but they have a hard time. So I'm going to give you some examples of this. So this is Olay Learning, uh, olaylearning.com. They're an online workplace safety company. Um, they made profit hot fifties list of Canada's fastest startup companies last year. And you can see their website. But what I want to show you is their unique value propositions. This is something we work with them on. And so as you scroll down the site, this website is laced with value propositions for this potential buyer that comes to the site. You know, this, this HR manager who, because of regulatory reasons, needs to make a quick decision on what type of workplace safety courses they're going to buy and from whom not a lot of time here. And if you go through all the workplace safety vendors out there, if you go to their site, they all sort of look the same. So this is, I, I wanted to show you all this example because you can see there was some real thought put into what are the real value propositions 
of this company. What makes you know, your post-secondary school in London here different from the Toronto school? What makes your law firm different from the other law firm down the street? And this, this, is, this is branding, right? But bring it into your website. And then you can see it's very easy to start to shop on the left-hand side based on the UI here, the user interface. So that's the first thing. You can increase your, your call to actions. Most websites I look at when we do audits usually have one or two ways that somebody can contact them on, on the website. And I'm trying to give you guys some real basic stuff, but, but all, these, all this basic stuff adds up if you, if you take action around them. Most websites have two, like two, two ways to contact um, a company, sometimes only one. And sometimes it's really obscure. You'd be shocked. If you start to look for this, start going on websites and, and try contacting companies. It's really funny that when you actually try to do that sometimes, you can't figure out how to do it. I don't know. Like that's, that's the old paradigm. That's, that was that, that, that self-fulfilling prophecy. That was a company not committed to making any money online. And then if you talk to them, they'd, they'd say, oh, yeah, you know, this is web doesn't make money. Well, yeah, obviously, nobody can actually contact you to buy your services. <laughs> so, so I'm seeing Ted serious. I see it all the time. You should imagine the type of conversations I have with people. So you can see this, right? So this is the North Star Windows and Doors website. North Star is Ontario's largest final Windows manufacturer. Great company out of all the Windows manufactured in Canada. Uh, North Star produces, I'm told, around 5% of them. This really, you know, as a manufacturer, they shouldn't be doing this. They should not make it, you know, they should not be focusing on, on consumers, but we did with them because they were getting thousands of uh, visits from consumers to this website. So we thought, well, why not? Why not set up a website so consumers can contact them and they can push those, those, those leads off to, off to dealers. So you can see this, that's one website. So you got, everybody can see that. So as you scroll down, it is inescapable. Consumers know how to contact this company to learn more or to contact dealers. Inescapable. And that website actually won recently. Um, I think alluded to this at the start of the call. That did that. They just saw one outstanding website in manufacturing at the 2013 internet advertising competition. And I'll, and I'll share more about some of the stuff that we, we did uh, to create greater leads for that, for the, for the client. You can run promotions. That's the third thing that you can do. And this is based on your business. You have to really think this through. Um, not all of these are just carbon copy. Let's fit inside your business, but but that this is another method or tactic that you can do. A great window and door dealer out of um, Toronto, a client of ours. You can see what they do. They offer promotions every month to consumers. This increases their their lead conversion rate on their website. Gives people a reason to contact the company. If you go to most retail websites, most of them actually don't have any any offers, any promotions on their site. So think about that. Think about what type of offer. Even if you're in professional services, maybe they, maybe it's not really a promotion so much, but maybe it's a special offer. Maybe it's, it's a, a cons maybe it's making clear that your consultations for 30 minutes are, are, are of no cost. If you have an accounting firm or a law firm. This is another tactic that you can do. Um, something most websites don't do, and it's and it's creating pop-ups or other types of display um, collateral on on the website. This dramatically generates an increase in leads as well. So this is an example of a pop-up on TBK Creative's new website, and we call that an interruptive. And it really is. I mean, it's you know the purpose really is to to, to generate more leads. There's there's no doubt about it. And then if, if you don't want to be as interruptive, and that's an area that I like to study is, is you know, when do you use them, when do you not use them? I find that really fascinating. Um, it's very safe to do what we call it is apparent pop-ups. And you can see an example of that with Scholar's Choice. And that's, that's there's a promotion. There's something going on that, that this organization wants you as the visitor to know about. And there's... Um, there's plugins and tools now. This is a tool that, that our agency had built called Footer Floater. It's a WordPress plugin. And it works great. Um, so statistically, you can see it on Oakwood's site. Statistically, 14% of website visitors click click on click on those buttons in our in our research. So that's another way to increase your 
hot leads. This could be one of your promotions that you're that you're doing. So those are some tactics to increase hot leads on a, on a website. Let's talk about soft leads. And I want to create a context for soft leads before I before I explain what they are. So with your website there there is going to be three types of people that go to your website right now every month. First type, they're within your demographic, they're, they're the right target audience and they're ready to buy. And that usually gets represented everybody in, in side of um, the people that phone you and the people that fill out web forms. They're the right demographic, they're ready to buy, they call you and you, you, make, you make a sale. Then there's a segmentation of your website traffic that's your wrong demographic and they'll never buy. And, and this could be for a plethora of reasons. This could be competitors going to your website, that's a common group. Um, people from outside of your demographic. They could be, maybe you sell only services, you're licensed to sell your services in Canada and they, they come to you from Michigan. It's, you know what I mean? It's the, it's, the, it's the wrong demographic they will never buy, that's a segmentation. Then there's this third type of website visitor that every website has right now. Your website has it right, right now as well. They're the right demographic. They are your target audience. And they will buy your product, type of product, one day. They will buy from a supplier like you. But they're not ready to buy right now. And so think about it yourself to, to really get in, the, get in the role of this third, demo, this third segmentation. When was the last time you went on a website and you didn't buy a product? Probably a lot. You are probably in that moment in this third third type. This third type, I would assert, is nearly as important, if not more important, than the first type. And if you look at your website right now, and if you look at most websites out, out on the internet right now, they are not created to capture leads from this third type of, of, of website visitor. And it's a and it's a it's a, it's a it's a it's a tragedy because that person will buy your products at some point might be in three months might be in twelve months they will buy they just might not buy from you because they forgot who you are they went to your site they looked at your services or products they left your site and uh, they get on with with their day um, one of the principles at TBK Creative told the story about how um, how her uh, father, went, um, recently, a couple of years ago, her father and mom bought a, bought a house in, in Windsor, Ontario. And, um, and they, knew this, they knew this realtor, like an acquaintance for, for, for ten, 10 years. And they ended up wanting to really just, you know, move forward and buy, buy a home. And, and uh, he ended up calling, he actually ended up calling a business, um, a, a, a fridge magnet, a realtor's fridge magnet that was on his fridge. Um, Melissa's father and, and and booked and so when the realtor found out about this who, who knew him for 10 years he was all upset about it and you know yes he, you know Melissa's father uh, probably felt felt bad he would have liked to give him the business but he didn't think of him in that moment <laughs> she was more interested in actually fulfilling on his needs in that moment not about you know who should that supplier be he was a consumer that had needs and the, the person with the fridge magnet that stayed in front of them won. And so it's sort of, it's sort of, like, it's sort of like that. That is, that is marketing, right? So, so I, I create that as a context, and it's a powerful context for you to understand the value, the importance of that third demographic. So there is, there is untapped economic value for, for most websites in starting to build plans around, around capturing this third demographic in, in terms of leads. And when you do, that's what we call a soft lead. And so I want to share ways that you can begin capturing soft leads through your website. Let's go through each one. Very simply, you see this everywhere. They're, they're, they're somewhat worth the space, I would say. They're, they're not going to explode you in growth. Like, you're, you're not going to, you know, have an, uh, a, like, just a real breakthrough in leads as a result of this one change, but they're probably worth the space on the site because they will they will create leads over time, I found. And that's that's having an e-newsletter opt-in somewhere on your site. So that, that's a, that's an example of of creating leads that are soft leads. 
And I'll get, and I'll, in a few minutes, I'll get to what you actually do with the leads when, when you capture them. Depending on your business, you can now host webinars. As people register for webinars, that generates soft leads for your organization. You can see a webinar series that TDK Creative rolled out last year with Scholar's Choice. And I think this is a good example because you would never think that a retailer could do something like this. Well, we did it. We focus on the ethos, the, the source of their brand, and it's that they, they're committed to, to causing educational excellence for, for children and students. And so we host webinars for, for parents and teachers. And it works. Over 500 people every month re register for these webinars. It works. It was a really uh, emotional, moving one last month. Right, Reagan actually moderated it. That was a good one. Yeah. Okay, let's go to number three ebooks. This is a powerful one. So, if you run a business, your team has a particular expertise that the marketplace is interested in. That's why you run. That's why you run a business. If, um, that's why people come to you for services. You you are able to provide something they they don't. You can offer e ebooks, and you make you you make them available for download through your website. And as people are downloading the ebook, you are capturing those those leads. They don't have to be that that long. They could be ten pages, fifteen, twenty pages. Turn them into a PDF, allow people to download them. You can see a Scholar's Choice one, for example. But make them valuable and give them away for free. And this is very consistent with attracting people that are in research mode. They're not ready to buy. They're ready to learn, ready to be educated, ready to be empowered. They're just not ready to buy. So, so build a relationship with them. This is just a method to do that. You can run contests. This was a contest last year that we ran with, with North Star Windows and Doors. It was a sweepstakes. Make sure if you do something like this that you're, you're figuring out the right gaming laws. You always have to think about that for the, for the provinces that, that you run it in or states. Um, but this is another method that you can generate soft leads. These are not people. So this is instance here of window, you know, North Star giving away ten thousand dollars worth of windows. These are not people that are looking potentially to buy windows right away. They're looking for free windows. <laughs> but but if you have people join this this contest, you know something about them. What do you know about them? You know they probably own a home. So they're qualified leads. If they rented, they wouldn't care to win free free windows because they couldn't do anything with it. They, they would just be putting them in their garage. And you can capture leads through a form. You can, you can install live chat nowadays. There's great third-party live chat tools that can generate leads for you. You'll know who you're speaking with. It's a much softer way for somebody to reach out to your company who might not want to speak over the phone. They might just want to type messages to you. You can have your regular customer service team speak with them. Livechat.com, I, I believe it's livechat.com, is, uh, is one of the leaders in, in this space for live chat on websites. So I have another um, formula for, for, for you to jot down. And this, so the first formula we really looked at everybody was total revenue from a website. It was, um, and that's again, like non-e-commerce non websites. But now I want to speak about how to measure the value of, of a soft lead. Soft leads aren't really, you can't really say they generate revenue right away because they actually don't. They don't, they don't generate revenue. They're a soft lead. It's a lead. Um, and so you can't even say that they, and you can't really capture them as, as, as economic value right away. You can't say that, that it's a particular amount of revenue because then you, as you're doing your charts, if you do this every month, you're gonna you're gonna duplicate it twice because that lead also might become a sale in six months. So you don't really want to record it as revenue revenue twice. So you would never say like hot leads plus soft leads. That would never quite be accurate. The best way to look at future revenue from soft leads is more like a KPI, more like a key performance indicator. It's an indicator of how much revenue you're gonna make in the in the in the future. And so something you can do to kind of determine 
how much revenue you will make from your soft leads in the future is this formula. You take all your soft leads, you determine what your close rate is on the soft leads. And I'll, I'll explain in a few minutes again how you start to close soft leads. But you need to determine what that close rate is. This for businesses can be anywhere from typically five upwards as well to 60%. It really can. Depends what you do with them once you, once you have it as a lead. And then you multiply that by, the, again, the average value of a customer, which you would have determined in the previous exercise that we did. So, so jot, jot that down so you have it, and that's some work that you can, you can do. Close rate's going to take you probably a bit of time because most websites, probably most of the websites um, on the call here, don't yet have a soft lead program that, they've, that you've deployed, and that's okay. It's just going to take you some time to then figure out what your close rate is. It might take you six months, but, but track it as you get leads in, determine in six months of you know, the number of those leads in a given month, how many are now customers. The two best ways that I'm aware of to convert soft leads into sales, and it works, is number one, you phone them. <laughs> and number two, email marketing. The best, best way, you phone them and email marketing. Some businesses, you, it's, it's easier than others for phone. B2B, obviously. Um, people are very used to getting phone calls at their office. not a big deal. Um, certain B2C businesses, you definitely can do it with some B2C businesses. Um, and then there are certain ones as well, depending on what service you offer. You might not want to do that. Like I could see, for instance, a medical center not doing a um, phone call follow-up on, on a soft lead. That, that came in because of the sensitive information. You could have somebody else pick up. It could cause an issue that you couldn't, you know, you couldn't foresee. But if you're, if you're selling, you know, let's say you're in HVAC, you're selling central air, you know, no, to a consumer, no problem. If you get a soft lead through your website, phone that person, get it over to your sales team. It's, it's no longer a marketing thing. It actually goes into a different department. It's a sales thing. And then uh, email marketing. Um, Something that is really um, misunderstood and not done enough, I find, with businesses is still email marketing. The big businesses have figured it out. They are slamming people with email marketing because it works. So think through an email marketing program and, and uh, begin and, and keep, keep your message in front of people. If you're promotions, if you're more professional services, you can, you can focus more on education with, with some call to action still, though. I'm going to share three um, case study examples of some of the stuff that we just spoke about in, in action. Fertility Ontario is one of Canada's premier fertility centers based in London, Ontario. You can see the, a website here that we developed for them last year. And so, again, this is a repeat of some of the stuff, but I want, to, I want you to see it in action. So really focusing on call to actions, I believe the previous website had two ways to reach out to the, to the clinic. This new one has countless ways to, to reach out. It is very obvious how to reach this organization to book an appointment. We introduced an ebook series with, with um, Fertility Ontario where doctors write educational e-guides on ways that people can increase their fertility success. And so you can see one right on the main page that a website visitor can download called Five Baby Steps to Fertility. I read it, it's a, it's a good book. And it's, you know, we, we branded it for, for, um, for Fertility Ontario. So it's a really nice touch, touch point. You can wrap, my recommendation is if you have a blog and you, you are gonna get into eBooks or webinars or you have other promotions, wrap, wrap the promotions, wrap the eBook, wrap the webinar around your blog. That'll be motivating for you because a lot of blogs, once you start with the business, they don't produce any leads and then people become unmotivated and they give up. If you wrap a blog with, with promotions and e-guides, a certain percentage, it'll pro if, if you're doing a good job, it'll probably be one to three percent of, of the visitors to that page will download your, your e-guide or register for your webinar or um, you know, uh, take action upon a promotion if you're doing something like that. All these tactics to generate leads. Wrap, my recommendation in a lot of cases is to just wrap the, that content with your what's called premium content. 
your e-guides or webinars. You can see at the title page for the for the Fertility Ontario ebook, so you get a sense of what I mean by branded. If you have the resources for that, um, great. Key is make it really good content so that people can find it to be very valuable. Um, we launched a webinar series, like full blown. Like this is a content marketing strategy. So if you hear like people talk about content nowadays, kind of loosely, this is this is what I'm speaking about. Like like really thinking through how do we use content to, to provide value to the marketplace to generate more leads for, for this organization. Every month a doctor leads a, a webinar. We'll even bring in experts. And you, could, you saw one here. Um, this is an author, speaker, and relationship expert. Um, not even from Fertility Ontario. We brought her in just to speak and, and brought on the medical director with Fertility Ontario to speak. Here's another one. Speaking about how food can impact fertility. Around uh, Movember, men and fertility. And I want to show you some, some results. Um, this was an organization that really believed in the power of web and they, they decided that they would invest themselves, their organization, to really a, a lifelong commitment as an organization to use the web to generate business and, and it is working since since uh, launching the site last July, hot leads each month are up over 200%. So, so, so over 200% more people contact the organization every month to actually book appointments. That's what that means. And this is without tracking the phone. We, we do not have phone analytics set up on this, on this site. This is uh, through, through web forms. Total leads, the combination. Getting back to that one of those first slides, if everybody remembers, total leads. Hot plus soft is up over 800, it's up 857% in our most recent review. And that's their current website with, with you know, all the call to actions, the content marketing compared to their old site that had no content marketing and only two, two call to actions. Total website conversion is 7.4%. That means almost one in 10 people who land on this site contact the organization and out of all their online leads, 64% came from content. I wanted I want to share that statistic with everybody so you can actually really see the power of, of this in action and how it could work for your site. And, that, and that's, that's a screenshot that I want to share with you guys. So you can see this is, these are real, uh, you know, <laughs> this, is, this is really happening. <laughs> real performance here. Um, these were downloads um, of, of that ebook that I had showed you. In 11 months. Here's the second case study, and this was North Star Windows and Doors. This is a great one because they're manufacturer, right? So you can really think from, you know, how how traditional would that would that be? But their management team had a willingness to be in that latter paradigm. They they didn't know all, and actually not experts with digital, so they didn't know all the actions they could take. But they had a willingness to learn and to take action when they felt it was right for their organization. And so you can see a very similar process here. Lots of call to actions. Very easy for consumers to, to reach out. We introduced content marketing for this organization. E-guides, consumer e-guides. You see the form that people fill out that captures them as leads. We launched online campaigns. A bunch of little things, but it adds up over time for your organization. Every little thing will, if you do it well, will, will produce a greater economic result. And here's the results. In year-to-year -year comparables, website traffic is up to over 275 or 272%. An explosion in leads, and that's not a typo, it is 20, an increase of over 2,900% in leads in year-to-year uh, -year comparables. So 11 months versus what they would traditionally get in, the, in, in those same 11 months from the previous year. To translate that into a number, it's over 8,000 more leads that they, that they got that they would not regularly get. We're able to link back through tracking over 
$1.8 million to the website in leads that had come through one of the promotions. It was one promotion that we had, we had done. It was a six month campaign. Just, just phenomenal. And I think on Friday, um, Northstar had their best um, day in the history of their company. And they've been in business, I think, over 30 years. They had their, their, their highest sales day in the history of, of, of their organization. And that's the, one of the campaigns that you saw won best online campaign in manufacturing at the 2013 Internet Advertising Competition. Show you a third case study. Sports and Fitness Insurance Canada, they're Canada's largest provider of um, fitness and health club insurance. Similar process. And I'm, and I'm, I'm doing this because I want to repeat certain things so you guys can see this in action inside of different industries. I don't want you to be stopped by you know, not being able to see how it could, might, some of this stuff might, might be able to apply to you. I don't want you to be stopped by, by that, not being able to see that. Lots of call to actions. If you were trying to reach out right now, would you know how to do it? <laughs> <laughs> right, Megan, do you know how to do it? <laughs> do I know how to do it? it? it you would know how to reach out, would you? I I think so. Yeah. Thank you. Thank <laughs> I'm you. taking the hints. <laughs> yeah. And I'm, and it's kind of a, it's a running joke, right? Because again, go to sites, go, go see how hard it is sometimes to reach out to companies. It's just, I marvel at that. It's true. Sometimes you really have to search and you just, you give up before you really want yeah. to. Yeah. Yeah. Um, content marketing was installed here. So you can see that within the individual um, service pages, sort of their, their, their vertical areas that they service, um, eBooks, you know, really, and it makes sense, right? Like, why not? If you own a health club, why not, you know, as, as the insurance provider, why not help that person, give them information on what they need to know about, about health club insurance claims. Would you not want to download that information before you made a buying decision on insurance? I might. It's practical, but effective dance studios. I started a dance studio. I know nothing about dance studios. If I was starting one for the first time, I've never bought insurance before. You know, I'll download this and read up. So that was so that was on the content marketing side, and then we did something on the lead acquisition side of this website that I think was very powerful um, in the insurance game. Um, their bread and butter comes in through basically applications. You you in, in any kind of insurance setting, you you need you need applicants, and then and then you approve a certain percentage, and away you go, and you give them coverage. What was happening with the previous site was that they were providing PDFs that people could download, but the issue was that once they downloaded it, that's that was it. You would never you know you would not know who downloaded it. And there was no ability for the sales team to follow up, so you'd only get a small percentage of those apps back. And it makes sense, you know, once you have the app in front of you, like. A lot of people probably just wouldn't, you know, they would just not prioritize it. Be the last thing on their mind because these can be some of these apps can be very, very um, cumbersome. So what we did was we changed things slightly with the website. We required users to fill out their information to get the app. Small change, big result. This this website now uh, converts at twenty point one percent, and that's unprecedented in my um, history of doing digital marketing. I still haven't seen a website. Um, that that generates over twenty percent lead lead conversion on like a main like on a main site. That's one over one in five people who visit that that company contact contact or who visit that website contact the company. Th think about that for a moment. And it's uh I think it's a it's a smart combination of UI UX like user interface design really clean making it very easy to reach out. You're very clear if you see here at the top where you need to go. And uh, it's very clear how to get your application. It's very successful. So that completes hot leads, soft leads. I've given you guys some some ways to start to measure some of the stuff that you can do and um, measure some of the value on your website now. And I've given some tactical action items that you can do to start to increase the um, leads and then sales um, for your website. There's two other types of visitors that hold value that I just want to like touch on right now. And, and that's visitors of interest. And they're just, um, they're, there's some value there. Just be aware of them. Um, I think they're just important to mention because there is some, there, there is some um, 
some value there. They're just tougher to measure what the value is, but I don't want to just brush over and say they don't exist. If a, uh, so, so for instance, right, North Star here has a dealer locator. So if somebody, somebody goes through the dealer locator, we can track that through analytics. You'll be able to track that through your analytics if you set it up a certain way and you can see what pages they go on. I would say that that visitor has value. So when you're kind of doing your own metrics for your company to determine the value of your website, it's just tough to, to measure the value because we don't know, for instance, how, so this is one of the dealers within Northstar, Brock Doors and Windows. We just don't know how many people showed up at Brock Doors and Windows website as a result of going to the Northstar site in this instant. We can install we can take care of the phone side and we actually have, there's phone analytics on this one, one client and you can do that on your site. So the phone can be covered, the web form can be covered, the, the, um, the address can because you don't know if somebody gets off the site and then drives, drives down to, to a dealer. But I want to share that as well. So if you have a website that has a location on your site and somebody shows up, like if you're a retailer like that, that would also be a visitor of interest. They might have gone to your contact us page. They might have seen your address, they might have shown up, maybe you sell frozen yogurt, maybe you sell ice cream, maybe you have a, a hamburger, a chain of hamburger restaurants. You know, those, those are visitors of interest. Tough, tough to um, me measure, measure with granularity, but still important to note. And then e-commerce, of course. Um, the biggest thing that e-commerce sites um, should, should um, really go after in terms of the type of visitors, really transactions and sales. You can definitely deploy soft lead programs. They do work. They will generate more leads. They will generate more sales over time. But the, the biggest thing is really, you know, developing a, a website that actually converts sales. And so it's all about that. And you can see just e-commerce examples, obviously. Um, so that's crystal clear Megs, out of Strathroy, Olay Learning that you saw earlier. It's all about the sales, Scholar's Choice, their, their e-commerce website. Some takeaways is learn what your website is generating in revenue through understanding your hot leads, which is a combination, everybody, again, in recap of your, um, your phone calls and, and web, web form, forms. Figure out your close rate and then determine what your average customer value is. Multiply those and you start to understand your value. And then what the value of your website, then you start to make changes to your, to your website to increase lead conversion rates, or you have confidence in spend, starting to spend money on digital advertising or other forms of advertising uh, to generate more traffic because you actually know your website's converting. You know, I don't know if I mentioned this, but to figure out your conversion rate, you want to take your unique visits and then figure out how many, how many hot leads um, actually came in and then that would give you your, your conversion rate. So if you see like a, like a, like a 20% or a 3%, you know, the 20% means 20 out of every hundred people would contact the company. 3% means three. Um, third takeaway is start introducing content marketing and other promotions to increase your soft leads. We spoke about also how to nurture and convert soft leads. And you can do that through phone calls and email marketing. And that's the main, main content. So I'm happy now to answer a few questions um, before we wrap up today. Alrighty, jam-packed presentation there. So um, we do have a couple questions coming in right now, Andrew. Um, Cameron actually asks, any suggestions for good CRM web applications? Ones that are free or possibly on a freemium? I love that word. <laughs> yeah, the, the best um, CRM that I've ever used was free and it was Excel. <laughs> <laughs> And I, and I actually, and I actually mean that, I know that's, that kind of sounds funny, but, um, I've used different CRMs and there's some good ones out there. Uh, they, they, it, most CRMs that I've seen still take a little bit of, of work once you set up and they have some more robust tools that you may just want to use for your organization. Um, so there's, there's some big ones out there like salesforce.com. Um, 37 signals has, has one, I believe it's called high rise. I think those are two of the most common ones. Those are not free, those two, but they're very common, credible CRMs. Um, but depending on your type of business, if you're in sort of B2B sales, um, you'd be surprised. I find Excel's, if you set it up a certain way, an Excel document can sometimes be, can do the most stuff because you can customize it much, much more easy, easier than a lot of CRMs and, uh, and they're free. So I would recommend taking a look at how you can actually use Excel better. Awesome. Um, now, if anybody else in the audience has any more questions for Andrew, 
um, whether it's something that he covered in the presentation or something that is still outstanding for you, feel free to ask right now. Um, Andrew, Donnie asks, uh, any thoughts on how to draw the line between free and for a fee content? So if your business um, is training and content, how much do you give away versus requiring payment? Yeah, good question, Donnie. Um, I would focus heavily on call to actions throughout the site that has people register for your service. Um, perhaps think through, and, I, and I'm missing a bit of context because I'm not clear about all the things that, that your particular organization sells, so, so please keep that in mind with my recommendations. Um, but I would, generally speaking, um, focus on call to actions around your main service that's important. Think through value propositions with that service. So are you providing a refund period? Are you offering it for free initially, a trial period? Are you providing a guarantee? There's been some studies in the past where when, when certain software type companies, they offer like a 60 day money back guarantee, they, they over double the amount of sales and only whatever, a very small percentage ever return it. So, so the ROI actually massively increases as a result of doing the 60 day guarantee. There was even a study, I'm not, I'm not, I don't remember the, the, the name now, but I remember reading it a few years back. They actually tested like 30 day, 60 day and 90 day. And they actually found, I think it was a 60 day was actually more effective than the 30 day as well. So there's actually, there can be a science behind that. And for you to learn what's best for your business, you'll want to do some, um, what they call split testing. So you can test different, different, um, different methods. Um, so I would really focus really on call to action so that people really know uh, that what service you offer and they can, they can take real easy action to buy your product. And then um, throughout the website, you can, you, you can lace it with different types of, Ebooks or potential webinars. I just wouldn't do it too, too heavy. Maybe you know two or three um, throughout the site that allows people just to download on a particular topic. And if you get Don, if you get very and, if, and for everybody, if you get very clear about what the ebook is, but what the title is, for instance, then it does. It's not necessarily going to distract you from selling a service. So if you sell a service that encompasses you know A through Z, and then you're offering an ebook on you know half of A or A and B, um, then it's not, you know, people will still download, which generates the soft leads, and then you can allow, you know, your sales team can follow up, um, have a conversation with, with them, but it doesn't distract from your actual sales. It, it shouldn't at all, because people would still um, probably need the A through Z to solve whatever the problem they're going through. Great. Um, a great question comes in from Chris. He's asking, how important is original content versus borrowed licensed content to attract interest? Yeah, I think generally, it's, I, I don't know how important it is. Um, I, think, I think there's some things where, where it depends on your situation, I think, Chris. From an, so if you're talking about a blog, for instance, there's, sort of a te there's a technical answer to it. You have to be careful around what's called duplicate content. So if you actually are duplicating content from a search engine optimization perspective, you might get no credit at all um, from using that content. Um, you know, yeah, and I'll take something from, from publishing companies. They, you know, most publishers and news sites really hate um, using duplicate content. They will value it less, but they will still use it if you notice. And so if you think about like a Canadian news website, they'll reuse things like the Canadian press or the associated press. So I think that's a good, uh, maybe to, to, to frame it inside of a different context for everybody. Uh, that's a good instance of that. So let's, so I think the, the lesson there is that it still has value because you're getting content out. It is duplicate. You're getting content out and it's solving the appetite of your visitors. And, and you're, and I, the benefit is the time it took you to produce that content is not, next to nothing. So that's sort of the, the benefit. And that's probably why you're asking that, that question, Chris. Um, and, I, and, then, and I don't think it would be as powerful as your own, own content that can't be found elsewhere. And, but I think you now need to weigh, the, weigh the, the investment. Is it worth investing in original content all the time? Or can you still fulfill in your, your goal of just using duplicate content? And in a lot of instances, you probably could still fulfill on some, some good goals and some successes with, with duplicate content. But you got to, you know, just got to be careful of, of duplicate content in terms of, uh, certainly for, for, in terms of SEO. Branded content will always be better. 
Original content will always be better, but you need to decide if it's worth the investment. All right, awesome. Uh, well, on that note, that looks like all of the questions uh, for now. If anybody has any further questions after this presentation, Andrew, how can, um, how can we be contacted on this? Yeah, okay, cool, yeah. So in, in closing, a um, couple things, everybody. Feel free to keep in touch with TBK Creative. You can do it socially, um, facebook.com forward slash TBK Creative or at twitter.com forward slash TBK Creative. Um, we have a new website, so feel free to definitely t check us out. Um, send, send me your comments, Andrew at TBK Creative. I'd love to hear from you, um, Andrew at tbkcreative.com. But um, we have a blogging suite here that provides free education for people. And we are, we are really focused on our own content and providing high quality education that, that does make a difference for, for businesses in terms of their digital marketing. This um, webinar is, has been recorded and Regan's going to work with the team and actually making it available to you in about seven days or so at this URL. So feel free to check it out then. And, and if there's colleagues you need to share this webinar with, um, then, then that's where you can find it. And then the third way to um, reach out and how we can help is with is is possibly for your own business. So there's a product that TBK Creative offers businesses called the Digital Profitability Plan. Um, very powerful. We recently we did our own little study after running several of these digital profitability plans for businesses. We basically run a full audit on your organization and we discover uh, economic. Uh, opportunities that the business is missing out on right now. They're blind spots. You know, you just don't know what you don't know. Um, and they're powerful. We, we comb through your website and run audits, email marketing, content marketing, social media marketing, SEO and SEM and online campaigns. And then we figure out an aggregate of what's possible and recommendations to get there for your business. We call it a digital profitability plan. Um, our average one to date um, uncovers $3.46 million in annual revenues that businesses can attain through digital. If you want more information on that, that's the, the other way we can help, then just reach out to me at Andrew at tbkcreative.com. That wraps up the conversation today, everybody. Uh, please email me any feedback that you have and uh, thanks for being on the call. I really understand the commitment that you guys have to your businesses and, and, I, and I hope that we fulfilled on those three intentions at the start of the call. Thank you for being on the call, everybody. Have a great day. Thanks, everyone.